In this episode of Horse Shelter Heroes, we go to the auction and rescue a lot of horses, including this little guy who had extremely overgrown hooves. In this video, you'll watch our farrier go to work and transform this little mini's feet. So it's auction week. We're gonna be heading up to quarantine to get all the horses pulled out. We're gonna give them dewormer, check their weight, see how much weight they gained while they were in quarantine for 30 days. And then we're gonna go back up and we're gonna get quarantine ready for auction intake tomorrow. This is Courage. He's one that still has to get gelded. He's working on gaining his weight so we can geld him. And he has, I believe, gained some weight. 40 pounds. 40 pounds. Nice. I'm going to give him some wormer and some probios. It's very cold. I am about to die. Chiron, yep. This is another stud that still needs to be gelded. I am drawing up some exceed to give him for his snotty nose. This is charcoal. Um, 1362 and 635 pounds. Has gained, let's see, 40 pounds? 30 pounds. 30 pounds in quarantine. This horse is always shivering. Oh, this is Cody. So she came in and right away we had to get her off the truck and trailer and have Doc, Doc stitch her. And as you can see, look how good her eye looks. I don't know if you can get a good angle. You can't even see that anything happened. This is Kalista. Um, this horse gained about 80 pounds in quarantine. Eight twenty five. Eight twenty five, really? Because it says seven hundred that she came in. So one hundred and thirty five. But pounds. if she's pregnant. Yep, that is very true. She has a little bit of a snotty nose, so she's gonna get this just in case. She's the nicest horse we got from auction. <laughs> she's so so sweet. This is the horse who had the abscesses. So this is Casper, he is blind. I think he's newly blind. He's not super well adjusted yet, so he's having a hard time, but hopefully he will start adjusting. So this is Callum, he came with Casper. Feed right now. He's got a bit of a snotty nose, so we're gonna get that taken care of. And hopefully he will get better. You got this, there you go, good job. 1371. Just gave her some ivermectin, so wormer. And before I gave her some probios. Um, this horse is a standard bred. She came from auction last month. And her name's Chloe. She gained uh, over 100 pounds in quarantine. Should have known it was you I would love until the end. She is a very nice, very well put together horse. I'm super excited to see if she rides and if she does, how well she rides. I don't know. She gained 75 pounds in quarantine. All I know is I want to go with you. No sure things. I am sure I want to live it with you. Ooh. 
so this is Cinderella. She did not come in with an eye issue. And as you can see, if you look at her eye, if she starts opening it, there's something going on. So I'm just taking a picture to send a doc to see if he wants to come out and look at it today or if it's something that he would wait on. How much, that, which uh, donkey is that, do you know? This is Chico, it was 310. 310? Well, I want to hand me Wormer and Probio. Oh, you're a little enough. Get your little booty up there. Go on, thanks. We just brought the two studs down. They still need to gain a little weight. We're gonna get them gelded shortly and then they'll live their lives as citizens without having to breed anyone. So we just brought all of our quarantine horses down. There was a couple that are still up there just cause they're on vet watch. They have a snotty nose and we just have to have Doc look at them. So he's gonna look at them and hopefully they'll get cleared. But otherwise everyone is down here happy and healthy and they'll start their evaluations. We have uh, two more horses today being surrendered from Texas. So we got two cryptorchids from Texas. They were just surrendered today. A uh, cryptorchid is a horse that has undescended testicles, so they get stuck up in the abdomen and they need a special procedure in order to remove this. So these are the two cryptorchids that we just got from Texas. Uh, this one right here is a two-year-old. They're both, uh, or he is a paint quarter horse cross and he is a quarter horse. Um, he was a little mountain nourished. They had the big ice storm over in Texas. Uh, earlier this year and we clearly had a hard time with that. It's probably one of the smallest two year olds I've ever seen. And then this is his dad right here and he is a quarter horse. Uh, they said that he is a little over 20 years old. Howdy. Hey Sarah. Hi. Last thing. What do you have? You're guilty. No, I'm not guilty. Well, you look guilty. You have a guilty face. I do. Why, why yes. does she look guilty, Angela? I don't know. She just walked in the door and she has this face. Nothing. I was out there filming Maddie's. Uh, we got what, the. Your pockets look pretty full. What's in your pocket? Not a little wide, Sarah. I got keys. I don't have any. Really? Look, I see something. I don't have it. What's the inside pocket? You know, you're running around. And got, we're, we're always busy here. Always something going on. And in mid afternoon, you get a hankering for a snack. <laughs> I think that's on you. You have to ask nicely, and then maybe I'll share. I'm good. Angela but, might want some. Dinner. I might want some at five o'clock. Okay, but, what's but in hey, there? listen, y'all can't tell anybody. I got snacks in my coat. Uh, uh oh. The boss is here. Hi. What can't you tell anyone? Uh, nothing. We were just filming an interview. Oh. Yeah. So what can't you tell anyone? Because this well, sounds interesting. Well, you see, I was hungry, and I got funyuns in my pocket. Oh. <laughs> she gets hungry. We can be out filming and she's like going along and all of a sudden she starts being quiet and she's just like a little plant just drooping over and you feed her and she bounces back up. And so now, and I also have little Debbie Christmas tree cakes. In the <laughs> Why? She's got Funyuns in her pocket. <laughs> the horses just came out of quarantine today and Cash is gonna be the first one to get evaluated so we can see what he rides like, how he handles and how he does everything. And I actually remember him at the auction. I watched him ride through. So a lot, if you notice on his left hip, he has this lump. And Doc is actually gonna cut that open to see what's inside it. Hey everyone. I have decided to, come on, come on. Good boy. I've decided to adopt a horse. <laughs> When we rescued this little guy, I kind of just instantly fell in love with him. For those of you who followed our organization for a long time, you'll remember Mancho Man, and he was our little mascot, and I took him so many different places. 
and this is a little 20 year old came in as a stallion and I'm like you know what he might be old and an old man but um, he can have a home with me so we're gonna do the paperwork and then if he's willing we'll try to do the uh, Amazon packages with him so let, let's make this official cowboy you shall be mine hopefully we can get him settled down where he can go out and do events and here is his paperwork yay that is your special little envelope he's like great i don't know what that means <laughs> so we're gonna rewrap cleo right now it's the horse that had abscesses on both of her front feet she is doing a lot better as she is staying over there she's good to go and i'm tired <laughs> So if you remember Cassie, she came from our last auction. They just came out of quarantine yesterday, so I'm gonna do her evaluation today and see how she does. She's a super friendly horse. She seems like she really likes people. She is a little bit older. She, I wanna say she's, pro, she's 20, if I remember correctly. So she seems like she has a lot of training in her. She has pretty good brakes. I sat in my seat, I used my hand a little bit, and she sucked. So I think being 20 years old, she probably had a pretty good life of riding. So I'm just gonna do an easy obstacle first. She was a little spooky coming into here, but she never did anything dangerous. I think if she was in consistent work with somebody and really got to bond, that she would be the perfect horse. So you want to talk to me about something? Yeah, we want to adopt the hero and Blake. Okay. All right, well, here's some paperwork. Go ahead and fill those out. Alrighty. Oh my goodness. They're best friends already. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. We're gonna go hook up the gooseneck trailer to Big Red and then we're gonna get ready to uh, take off for the auction. All right, we got the trailer all hooked up. Now we're gonna go get the auction intake box. All right, I think we're ready to go. How many horses do you think we're gonna get, Kimberly? Um, 20, cause we already have a lot, so. <laughs> so maybe 45? Oh, oh, okay, 45 and? Um, well, I'm gonna probably amend it because even though I think we should probably only get 20, I think Jason will probably keep bidding and we'll end up with like 37. Okay. Caleb, how many horses do you think we're gonna get at auction? Uh, I don't know, um, hopefully 20? We're gonna get, um, I'm guessing, 14 full-size horses, three ponies, and two miniature mules. So how, how many do you think we're gonna get? Okay, um, so I think uh, we're gonna be getting at least about 20 horses. All right, how, how many horses or how many critters do you think we're gonna get? About 30. About 30? Huh? How many critters do you think we're gonna get at auction? Um, 32. Oh. We got 47 last time. We're only expecting to get about 30. Let's go 34. 34, okay. All right, how many critters do you think we're gonna get at auction this week? I'd say about 45. 45, okay. All right, how many critters do you think we're gonna get? How many critters do I think we're gonna get tonight? 30. 30, all right. Okay, and my guess, I think we're gonna get 27. We're hooking up the trailers and getting ready to go to the auction. I've been fundraising and um, I, I always am a little excited when we're getting ready to go to the auction because I have no idea what animals we're gonna end up rescuing. Uh, one day we came home with a miniature uh, bull and a cow and um, it, you just never know. So um, I won't be mad if you bring home a cow. I know. So it's good to always check your uh, trailer tires before you hit the road and this one's a little low, so gonna have to go put some air in it. It's not uncommon, especially when the weather starts getting cooler to realize, well, time to put a little more air in the tires.
Oh, almost there. Got to hit 80 PSI. Okay, we can take this tripod. How much stuff you got? Oh, and you got, can't forget your vitamin water. Got some water, got all the batteries and headphones, and then got camera equipment, so we're good to go. Do you have the tripod? Yes, we have a tripod. And Lots you, of people are asking, are you gonna yeah, have yeah, a tripod? Yeah, we will have a tripod for the live stream. Perfect. And uh, yeah, as long as you have that mount for the phone. I think I do. Should be good we'll to check. go. All right. Bye. Bye. See ya. See ya. I'm gonna go save some horses. Bye. Bye. Hey everyone, I just wanted to give you an update. Uh, we are uh, almost to the auction and um, the sun is setting, it's almost gone. Uh, filling up the truck here. Um, Keith is driving Big Red, but he's, he's still behind us. So we're taking two rigs to the auction. We are headed to the auction, just got the rig filled up with gas and we're ready to go. here in Middle Tennessee um, at Cookville and the auction typically has about a hundred horses. Uh, 75 to 100 sometimes over 100. There's always a lot of horses that need help. So so far there is a small amount of horses, it's not a super big auction tonight. I've seen a big swollen hawk, some abscesses on a Belgian's hip, some laminitis and just stuff like that. There's not many super skinny ones, some are showing ribs, but they're not the super critical ones that we normally see. I'm sure more horses will get dropped off between now and when the auction starts too, so. Yeah. Yeah. Bell high, 75. Bell on horses trying to save some stop. lives. This one's going for a thousand dollars, not going to get this one. The auction's over and we were able to save 20 precious lives from the horrors of the slaughter pipeline. And that is just an amazing rescue. It's right before Thanksgiving. I know every single one of these 20 horses is so thankful that people just like you donated to make saving them possible. Tomorrow morning we're going to be getting up early. It's going to be freezing cold. I think it's going to be about 20 degrees and I know Tawny's going to be complaining about that a little bit. She does like summer a lot more than winter. But we're going to be out here for the horses and we're going to get them loaded up and back to the shelter just as soon as we can. I don't think any of these are ours. We're looking to see if these are our horses, which they are. So this is just shows all of the auction numbers, the description of all the horses we got, and so it helps us locate all of our horses. Right now I'm just documenting some of the horses that we rescued this evening. This little miniature right here, he's got really long hooves, and we're really hoping that we can rehab him and get him comfortable really soon. How you doing there, young hey. Yeah. So we were able to save 20 horses tonight and it was a very long night and they're all settled in and we'll be back in the morning to get them ready to head over to the facility. Yeah, you know, last month we were rescued about 47 horses and I know we didn't rescue that many tonight, but these 20 horses are so thankful. Oh, they are. And you can just see it in their eyes. They're, they're actually almost more at peace now than they were before the auction. They know that they were rescued by people who care. It's amazing to watch that transformation in a horse when they know they're safe, their body relaxes, their eyes relax, and you can just see it, you can feel it, it's amazing. You can see how nervous they are when they go through the auction ring and then right afterwards you can see that they start to relax. We're just leaving the hotel and headed to the auction. Because the auction gets over so late, um, we have in the past uh, taken horses directly from the auction to our shelter, but we got back like at three in the morning. Everyone was completely exhausted. It's not safe to travel with horses when you're that tired. And we're not able to assess the horses. And this gives them a little bit of a break uh, overnight. And then we do our auction assessment, take photos of them, uh, anything that they need uh, as pain management. Um, we give them sin chill to help them stay relaxed. And then once they're all assessed and we know that they can travel safely together in different groups, then they're transported back to our shelter. So we're gonna go do that now. 
Our supporters send us foot warmers and hand warmers, and then one of them sent really good, cool uh, heated beanie and scarf for me. I was so sweet. They know I get cold and uh, gloves. So just uh, trying to stay warm. Heated scarf, heated hoodie. Uh, I really appreciate the fans that try to keep me warm. So thank you. I was just videoing in our supporter group on Facebook. They um, give us the ability to have a supporter group and the supporter group, um, people can donate $4.99 a month and be in there and we post up kind of stuff we don't post on the normal Facebook page. Um, so that's, that's always nice. And then right now through the end of December, Facebook is donating $20 for every new um, supporter we get. So that's awesome. So just gotta make sure all my mics are ready to go for the day. Good morning. We're gonna grab the auction box. Help. Help. Oh, cool. Thank you. I got this one. This is where we um, set up our auction assessment. We always called it auction intake before, but it's really an assessment. The intake happens at our facility. So uh, we're getting the sin chill ready. Our halters and lead ropes, they were usually blue, and blue is our auction color, but we're switching blue to our new vet barn. So now we have purple as our auction color. That way if tack ever gets mixed up, we know where it belongs because it's all color coded. You got everything ready to go? You got the sin chill? Yeah, sin chill, some butte, yeah. lead ropes. All right, and you ready to take all the notes? Well, you got some fancy gloves there. I do, I do. They're touch screen. So wow. Can... Let's go look at the horses and I'll get them ready to bring back here and get their photos. I'm just amaze. Hi, baby. Aww. Hey, buddy. Hey, it's soft. That's, yeah, when I felt really it good. last night, I feel like Doc's gonna wanna cut it open. It is soft, and there's actually pus oozing out from the top. So that's a really good sign because he could have gotten a big sliver in there and it's just infected. So hopefully Doc can just uh, lance it and get it draining, and maybe he'll be fine. Hi, buddy. Oh, it's not as old as some. Not as old as most of the ones we get. Yeah. Sometimes we get them and it's obvious they're way in their 20s. That one didn't look like it's way in its 20s, so maybe teens. Hopefully we'll fix you up, huh? Probably just had them in a little tiny pen. Yeah. Obviously was feeding him, just didn't care to take care of his feet. It's really sad, the type of horses we see at auction. Um, so many horses, you can tell that at one point they were loved. They are just soaking up attention, but they have been let go so bad with their, their health. Um, a lot of times people have an older horse and instead of retiring it, they make the decision to just give it away because it's starting to have health problems. And the person that gets it isn't committed to that horse. And then it ends up just ultimately, you know, auctions, a slaughter pipeline and a pasture starving to death because its teeth it doesn't have teeth to eat the grass in front of it and so it's very important as a horse owner when your horse gets elderly be there for your horse and if you can't make that hard difficult decision because what i see day in and day out in my line of work is just so heartbreaking when people walk away from their seniors so keith and i are here to uh grab the horses we kind of look at them as we're grabbing them we bring them over give them their sin chill and if they need butless we give them their butless and then we get their picture tawny will take the pictures of them and then we find a pen to put them in to get them on the trailers i'm gonna go get my station set up and get the live feed going for our well our facebook fans so they can see what we're what we're doing we did that last time we did a whole live um, assessment at the auction and people really really liked it over a thousand dollars was raised from that video and so we're going to be doing it again i'm really hoping facebook uh donation buttons are working on lives last night they weren't um but 
it helps raise a lot of awareness. And it's great because I am telling Angela everything I'm seeing wrong with that horse. So we can make notes so Doc knows what um, he's looking at. And hopefully he's, he's able to come out today. He wasn't feeling very good, so uh, he took a day off, which Doc never takes days off, so. Good morning, everyone. We are at the auction, just getting ready to do our auction assessments. Um, we have 20 horses that we rescued last night. We have the first horse here and um, I wanna make sure the camera angle is good. All right, that's good, Maddie. Last time we had, uh, Caleb's gonna help. We had the phone setting on the panel and um, we're trying to, just where you can see more of the horse, yeah. But that's probably good. All right, okay, that looks like a good angle for everyone. So I yeah. think uh, Jason's ready to run more horses down if you guys are. We're run ready. Okay, let's go. Awesome. So we're going to head back down and get the horses ran up so that we don't have to walk so far to get the assessment done. This horse is completely blind in both eyes, but it trusts humans and seems to be fairly well trained to lead, just completely blind. So how do you go about figuring out which horse you're gonna try to catch and catch first? It's really simple. Whichever one puts its face in the halter first is the one I catch. So hopefully, Hopefully one is friendly up here. Whichever one runs away the least. Whichever one runs away from you the least. That's another way of putting it. Whichever, basically you pick the easiest one first and by the time you get down to three or four horses, you can pretty much catch any of them. And we, we just, we know nothing about these horses. So we have no idea if their halter broke. A lot of them were ridden through last night. So if you're in your halter broke, but again, we know nothing about these specific horses. So this is part of the assessment is are they easy to catch at the auction? Its legs look pretty clean. Hey, pretty one. It's got a goopy nose. It's probably about 12, well, maybe 12, 12 years old. Um, it looks a little stocked up in its left hind leg, like around the hawk. Maybe it got kicked or something. It's kind of swollen. I am taking photos of the auction tag and the horse. Um, we always do intake photos to the other side. But this seems like a really nice sweet horse and hopefully that leg is just from an injury or, or something. 17, 16, I hate four DSLD. years old, DSLD. DSLD in the hind leg, it's only, severe. Only four years old. Oh. This horse is so cute. Its markings are just adorable. The first one, and I hope you can see this, this it has a lump here, but it is, it is soft and movable. I don't know if they can see it with your camera there, but um, she has a sore right here by her hip bone, which makes me think that she has gone down and hasn't been able to get up. We do see a lot of draft horses that have um, those problems. Let me see if we can get her auction tag. Um, and on the other side, if you want to turn her the other way, she has a really big abscess on the side of her uh, leg there, but there is pus coming out of the top of it and it's soft. So hopefully uh, our vet can fix that. Um, and she also has another sore over here on her hip as well. So um, they might, they also, I mean, they get bed sores basically when they have an issue and they lay down. Um, and for these big horses, it takes a tractor to get them up. Um, and we have, we have seen some cases where we just, they, they just go down repeatedly and we can't, we can't get them up. And there's some pain issue going on because if they weren't in pain, 
they would be able to stand up if everything was working as it should. So hopefully um, those sores are not an indication that she's having a real problem somewhere and we can get those abscesses taken care of. Hopefully it's just like a big splinter or something. She's fine, I haven't seen anything wrong with her yet. Um, so hopefully it will stay that way. We have some unhandled horses coming in and so we don't try to touch them or stress them out. They've already been stressed enough so we just get their photos and put them in a pen with another horse that we think they'll uh, travel well with. Um, we, we're looking for any issues that they may have, like this one has a hernia. Um, it has some sunburn, but I don't think that's, that's a, a major problem. Um, and I get a picture of their auction tag, that way when we get back to the shelter, um, if they've lost their auction tag en route and we're trying to match them up with their paperwork from the auction, we're able to do that through these pictures. And we also post them on Facebook and ask for name suggestions, so. This one has the bad hawk. This horse has an extremely bad hawk. It's probably from an old injury, and um, it's it's just really rough. I mean, it's clearly why the horse was brought here is it's it has a severe injury. This horse, leg is right. this horse's leg is uh, probably got a lot of arthritis in it, and. Um, she's having a hard time walking, uh, so we're going to need to get x-rays. Her feet are really overgrown, so she's had those shoes on for quite a while. She's got some sin chill now, and now he's giving her butte, but it's really sad when, you know, horses that are suffering, whose owners should have made the right decision for them, are just taken to an auction instead. Because um, that horse, uh, its its leg is really rough. This one goes with the last one, they're buddies. So in, in our auction rescue pictures, you see the horses and they usually have blue halters and lead ropes when we're at auction. Um, we decided that our vet barn color is gonna be blue. All of our barns have different color codes. So um, like the intake barn is black, the training barn is green, the vet barn is gonna be blue. Our auction is now purple. Um, that way if tack gets mixed up, we're able to say, oh, this, this is the auction box. That needs to go to the auction box. So this little pony has super long feet. When we get back to the shelter, Doc's gonna wanna x-ray his feet just to see if there is any rotation and bony changes. But he seems super sweet. He's not super old. So hopefully it's something where we can give him proper farrier work and really give him that hoof care and it'll fix it and he'll be able to make a full recovery. So we're down to our last horse and it's a very odd one. It's supposed to be a boy and a girl. And uh, the auctioneer last night's like, I've never seen anything like this in real life. I've seen it on TV, I've never seen it on real life. Well, now we get to see it in uh, TV again, and the rest yeah. of us here get to see it to in real life. Real life, well, this is interesting. Um, so is that even possible, Tony? Yes, it? yes, it, it can. Sometimes it can be with interbreeding, sometimes it just, weird things happen. Uh, my great grandpa, um, he used to have goats, he melted them by hand, and. There was one goat he got from an auction and she had babies and it was a boy and a girl. Um, so it, this stuff does happen, but it's kind of weird, so. It has udders. Well, it looks like a mare to me. Look under its tail. Are you sure that that's not just a, an issue it has Swelling. in its private parts? <laughs> There's some issues under her tail, um, but I'm gonna say her because she's got more girl parts. So we're gonna stick with that. There could just be some weird thing she has going on under there, but um, it might be a boy and a girl, but definitely girl with some issues. After we get all the horses photos taken, we put them back here in pens so we can assess if they're able to travel well together. Um, if we just loaded them all up in the trailers last night, they could have been in uh, a compartment with another horse that was kicking them. We don't want to travel that way. We don't want horses to go through that. So part of the assessment that we do here at the auction is figuring out who's going to be able to ride well together because our trailers have different compartments. And so if horses are calm and happy together, we know that they'll be able to travel nicely together. So it looks like everyone's doing really well. Um, we have you know, a pen there with the critical horses, a blind horse, so we can get them loaded 
separately. Um, but everyone's looking really good. We should be able to get them on the road here and headed back to the shelter. Great to see you. Look at your little guys walking. These guys have been volunteers for quite some time, but the little guy came along and we, uh, we understand. <laughs> Hi, look at you. Well, I am so thrilled that you're here uh, volunteering uh, again. You've definitely been missed. I've missed y'all. It's, it's uh, like I said, it's just been a crazy year with a little oh, one. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, so. and they are able to help transport today. That's yeah, so absolutely. awesome. So, uh, I'm trying to remember when you first started volunteering. It was, it was. We were talking about it on the way here um, where y'all were getting started. You only had one barn. And yeah. the well, a lot has changed. A lot so. has changed when the, you when the you're there today. The trailer, so, so it was. Yep. It's a, been a big, uh, big journey. We're talking about it. That's that's awesome. Keith, you're just too efficient for us. He's yeah. he's so efficient. Got everything wrapped up, put away. But we always end up needing halters and lead ropes until basically we leave. So. Darby and Jesse are going to take our most critical ones, the pony with the really bad hooves, the blind one, and then it's two friends that are also critical. So they're going to be uh, taking our, our special ones back and we're going to get them uh, seen by a vet and figure out what needs to happen. What you got, Angela? Uh, the auction box and the tripod. Did you leave some lead ropes down there for us? I'm going to go get them. I was too lazy to carry it all at once. Well, You're not lazy. You got <laughs> no, your what, arms full. No, uh, Keith was just chewed out for packing everything up. I did. So. I told so, Keith not oh. to take all the halters and lead ropes and pack them up because they're, need they're them. back there. Yeah. They're back. I did leave them we, back there. We end up needing them until like we were ready to leave. So I we don't actually chew them out. I left them back there. I thought they might be needed, but I also didn't want to try to carry everything. <laughs> you're, you're all good. I'm leading this horse to the trailer. She's the blind mare, so instead of trying to make her run and bump into things, I'd rather just lead her so she doesn't have to go through that. Hey Keith, let's get your trailer back up next and get it loaded. Horses coming down the alley, getting ready to load up onto the trailer. With a little sin chill on board, they're not very hyper. But that's good because they're not feeling nervous, they're not stressed. They're just taking the time to check out the surroundings. How long have you been backing up trailers and trucks? I've been backing up trailers since I got my driver's license at age 16, so that was a lot of years ago. <laughs> so, oddly enough, this little paint horse in here, nobody likes him. And he'll just go into a pen. The Belgium seems to be tolerating him now. So he'll go into a pen and they just kick at him. They just don't like him. I haven't really seen that before where there's just one horse where at least some of the horses at a large group will like him, so. Anyway, going to get them loaded up with the Belgium. I'm sure they'll be fine. We're putting the Belgium and the paint horse up front, and then we'll close the divider. And then we'll put the uh, other two, the last two, in the back of the trailer, and we will be ready to hit the road. It's very important sometimes to be able to keep horses divided while they're traveling. They just don't get along sometimes, and it's better to have cut gates in your trailer where you can keep them divided. We need to actually physically count every horse in the trailers to make sure we have them all. I'm gonna ask everybody this. What's your favorite part of uh, auction intake these mornings? My favorite part is getting them loaded up because I know that they're they're all okay to transport. Like we've we've been here and there have been horses literally dying and that is just so hard to have to deal with emotionally, but that they're all okay to travel and they're all able to load up and um, their lives are really about to change. That's my favorite part. The difference of the interactions you have with them here versus at the shelter and what changes in just a two and a half hour 
ride there. What I really like about the auction assessment process here at the auction the next morning is we get to put hands on every horse that lets us put hands on. There's, there's some that are not trained and we can't actually touch them, but for those that are friendly and trained, it's really nice being able to get hands on, see how they are, know that they're gonna be okay and get them in the trailers and hit the road to the shelter. doing today how are you i think doing? the question is how are you are you I'm feeling surviving. all right I'm vertical i'm gonna hug everybody here and lick them before i leave <laughs> <laughs> i'm on antibiotics so oh i am too just got here and we're gonna bring the first one in. Uh, the uh, draft horse's abscess is pretty gnarly, so um, Doc says he's gonna glove up for that one. There's no microchip. We scan everybody. Occasionally we do get microchips in. Sometimes they're not registered to anybody. So that's an important thing if you Microchip your animal, register it in your name. It doesn't have a runny nose. I think penicillin's fine. I think she's young. I think about nine. I'm vaccinating to the best of my ability. And uh, we're giving her some vitamins and some antibiotics, some preemptive strike on antibiotics. So how heavy is this big draft, Jason? So this horse weighs in at 1,480 pounds. And that's, uh, that's a lot of weight on a horse. And the kill buyers buy by the pound, and I am really surprised we were able to re rescue this horse last night. And for, tell a little bit of what happened, uh, how we got this horse for 600. <laughs> oh, sure. So when the horse came through, I bid it up to 660, and nobody else was bidding, but that was a no sale. The guy wanted to reserve a 750, which is pretty good because I would pretty much keep it safe from slaughter. But then during the auction, he actually came up to me in the uh, audience and said, hey, do you still want that horse? And I said, sure, I'll get it for 600. And he said, okay. And so we ended up with the horse for $600 and saved its life for a lot less than slaughter price. I don't think he's that old. I only think he's about 10 or 12. Yeah, I was gonna say not over 15. It's hard to reach up here. It's very, very tall. I'm a, oh, we need to get some stuff in there to flush it, but I want to clip it and just sort of open it up and let it drain from the bottom. And then we'll start flushing it. Let gravity be your friend. Brucellosis in Tennessee for a while, but you never know. So anytime you see multiple abscesses, Quint is coming out to help with this little mini. Quint is our uh, advanced rehab farrier and he comes out for our, our major cases. So he is here today and it's really good because this little mini needs a lot of help. Number 1718 is 260 pounds. Just write down all the notes, height, weight, age, gender, breed, uh, what happens to them if they're sick or they have any issues or anything, it's all written on here. I made it, so I'm a little late. Good good to see you here. Um, so this little mini has really long neglected hooves. And um, obviously we'll do x-rays so we can see what we're looking at. Hopefully there's no rotation in there and we can rehab it. It's gonna be a long rehab though, cause mm -hmm. it's got those big slipper feet. But come take a look. Yeah, let's take a look at it and see what's going on. We're in trouble. Yeah, I'm saying minimum 25 to 30 degree rotations, personally. What do you think? 
Man, we were already getting ligament damage from where we're so far back on it, they were stretching those ligaments. Mm -hmm. We're just standing on the heels. That's going to be problematic too. So Doc and the Ferrier Quint are looking at it. It's not sounding good and that's, that's always what's so hard when we rescue animals that have been neglected is sometimes it's just too late and hopefully the x-rays will show differently, but uh, it's not looking good. We don't know what's happening. Well, here's what's weird. We don't have nearly as much rotation as we were expecting. Well, the curb gets us. Yeah, I, I, don't know I would what say to make it's probably that. more of a what they call a hoof capsule rotation rather than an actual bone rotation. Uh, I've I, seen it go both ways. I think you're probably right there. Do you want Doc to lay her down to work on her feet? It'd probably be easier on her. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted to hear, that there is not rotation. This pony could be saved, and it was looking really bad there when Quint first looked at it. But sometimes these cases can surprise you, and it looks like this is going to be possibly a positive outcome. So, fingers crossed, we'll see what happens. Well, it's not the first time I've seen this, but it is sad to see horses neglected for this long. I would estimate a minimum of two years, probably longer. So this is all dead tissue. Um, old, stretched out, and dead, so we're just gonna, it's like having extremely overgrown fingernails. It's just sad, but we're gonna do the best we can to make her better. Um, she can go in the pasture, right? Uh, we, we've given her everything? This horse has some founder, it looks like. We're going to be taking x-rays, but uh, it's not looking very good as far as what we're seeing from the outside, but the x-ray will show us what's going on inside. And if she is suffering, uh, we don't want to prolong that suffering. Her best friend is the next horse over. They're very attached, and that one is also extremely uh, lame. We're going to be taking x-rays of both of them. If they do need the last act of kindness, we'll have them sedated together and they can pass on together. Um, it's, it's hard decisions we have to make as rescuers, but we have to figure out what is the best option for each and every animal that comes into a, our organization as an individual. And we don't want to prolong suffering. Oh. All right, Doc, what are we looking at here? We've got a, quite a bit of rotation with the bone atrophy the degree of um, rotation because it's not hoof capsule rotation which is easier to handle than um, bone rotation her chances of pulling through are probably less than one percent and there'd be a lot of suffering trying to get and her to what pull i through. mean by pulling through just making her pasture sound not even mm -hmm. able to be ridden again so doc is saying that he should come to the auction sometime and i totally agree it would so be an excellent idea. Maybe we can idea. figure that out if I get some. I have extra side loads. So maybe we can take care of some of them and do that. But That'd be cool. That would uh, be cool. Anyway. They can meet Doc the very first time they're <laughs> a, a, admitted to the organization. So this is the friend of the other horse, and she is extremely lame. Um, it's primarily right here in her right front. But they're they're friends, and it's always it's always sad when. Um... So Doc, we want to do an X-ray in the right front. X-ray right front. Yes, okay. she's very lame on it. Okay. I'm gonna go 13, 12, 13. She looks younger than the other one. I wonder if that's her mom. Oh. Oh man. That's rough. We've got pretty severe rotation. If you look at the hoof wall coming down in the P, P3, it's just almost going straight down. It's thinking about just poking through the bottom of the sole of the foot. So these two horses, this is just a really sad situation. They're both suffering from very painful lameness conditions. They are really bonded together. And in this case, because they are suffering and there's nothing that we can do to fix it, we are going to have them sedated and put to sleep together so they'll never they'll never have to be stressed or afraid that they're away from each other. 
they'll get their buckets of grain and um, we'll say goodbye to them. Just thankful that we did get them out of the slaughter pipeline and they weren't taken to Mexico or Canada and brutally killed. And they can be here with people who love them and they feel safe and know that they're loved. I took out most of it. It's a huge lamina winch, which is stretched out lamina. It's very painful. So you say it's very painful for her to just walk around like that. Yeah, it's absolutely. Cool. It's creating um, yeah, it's creating pressure. a tremendous amount of pressure here. I accidentally called this horse a paint because all I could see was the face, and the face is, you know, pretty black and white. And uh, poor Darby was going to go try to get a different horse. And so, you know, this one right here. But this one actually hurt his face before we uh, before we got him out of the auction. This horse hurt his face at the auction, and so we're just going to stitch it up. It does have some um, kind of arthritis in the knees, but it doesn't seem to be in the joint. So we're going to fix up his face and then keep him on a watch list and make sure that arthritis isn't hurting him too bad. Uh, X-ray technician and uh, tray holder. <laughs> Doc's right hand man. Is that a good height for you? Yeah. yeah. I'm prep it, so. When I worked, get her to prep it just oh. a little bit and clean it up before you start settling. When I worked at a vet office before, I held up horses' heads for their floating. That's why you want to go to school because you grow be on this end just doing some instruments. Not on this of, end. Under, under that end. <laughs> Study hard. You don't want to end up like me. <laughs> <laughs> I always want my cuts to be. I wish it was in the other direction because so this would drain. Would drain yeah. But the blood supply is coming from here down. <laughs> it's coming from the heart. So we, if it was coming from the wide part, we'd have probably a better chance of it sticking. But. Well, I mean, look at him. He's barely standing. You're doing fine. Okay. Brag on her, she'll do fine. You're doing great, well, Tony. Well, okay. She, she's not gonna go down. We're just way past drunk. Okay. Hey, Don. One seven one six. Six hundred and thirty-six pounds. I've gone down as low as I dare because what happens when they get these long feet is they're what they call the quick, the sensitive structure, actually travels down a little bit. So I've taken her down as low as I could. I've took off all of the extra, what they call the elf shoe, that I, I feel comfortable with today. And we'll take a check back with her in four to six weeks and see where we're at and continue addressing the issue. So Doc is here till four o'clock. So all the horses will be seen by Doc. We're looking at the most critical ones and then we'll do our intake um, and then relook at them again on Monday. Um, but tomorrow's Thanksgiving, so we're a little trying to get everything done. So this horse is blind, completely blind. So we're just being extra careful. machine pointed in the right direction. Oh, oh. oh wow. Oh. That's vertical. There's nothing we can do for this horse other than to release its suffering. Its coffin bone is so close to coming out of the sole of its hoof that um, the best thing we can do is, is just relieve the suffering that this horse has endured for who knows how many years, basically. It's really sad when we get cases like this. This is the worst founder case that we have seen this year. Um, it's just horrific. You know, it could be that that's what happened. I don't know if she had navel eel or what she had, but what you do with her is you drain that fluid and you put a pretty tight wrap, see if it stays down, but she's already getting some arthritis. Do you see the uh, maybe, maybe three. Maybe three. Yeah, maybe three. Two, three. Still, that's not a good joint for a three-year-old. We just want to thank James for donating pizza and coffee and hot drinks today for our intake day. Thank you, James. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. The blind horse likes pizza. Even though it can't see, it's very discerning about the quality of its food. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. Oh, we like that. So that is smooth stuff. So Y'all been holding out on me. This horse has some issues under her tail. At the auction, they thought it was a boy and a girl. Oh, well, I'm not sure. We're going to have to open those and see. I mean, it could just be some weird swelling. It could be. Uh, it yeah. doesn't feel like testicles. It looks like testicles. But, they're, you know, if they're in the wrong place, there's going to be some scar tissue and stuff, too. So, it's hard to tell unless you can... I mean, she doesn't have anything under there that is a female. Yeah. yeah. It looks... I'm hoping it just really looks worse than it is. So we will reevaluate her next week. I mean, she seems fine. Yeah, um, since she's not hurting, probably what we'll do is we'll tranquilize her. We'll open one of those up and see if it's just straight scar tissue, or if there's any kind of issue formed, formed tissue or any testicular tissue. So that's what that's what our big plan is on Mabel here. Mabel or Pat. Pat. So, <laughs> well, whatever her problem is, Doc will figure it out. And, we'll figure it uh, out. But we'll let her just kind of relax we, over the weekend and then. We have a plan. We have a plan for whatever he, she is. So we're heading out for the day, or at least I am. And uh, we worked on that one little pony. And then we've consulted on a few other ones that had such substantial deformities in their hoof capsule. And so uh, just excited that we're able to help out and head out. Happy Thanksgiving. Seven chestnut in its twenties. Seven to six hundred and nine eighteen pounds. I know it has it needs its hide done checked by dog. This is a blind horse that we rescued from the auction and we adopted out some blind horses recently and somebody was um, basically upset that we were adopting out blind horses and we do get some blind horses in here that are not well adjusted they're living in fear they're crashing into things and they just can't they can't handle living in their environment and when we get horses that are blind we we look at all different angles of you know are they going to be okay in new situations and like this horse she's been fine in every new situation that she's been in and so there's no reason if she continues to be this way that we can't find her the right home. We do have one blind horse that has been at our organization for about eight years. So we are very careful when we're placing blind horses that is absolutely the right home. Um, and this blind horse is extremely sweet and could make a great horse for somebody if they can overlook that she is, she has a disability. But just because she has a disability doesn't mean that she shouldn't find a wonderful home. Today went really well. We got all the horses intaked. There were four that did need the last act of kindness um, and the one that had the really extreme cock and bone that was that lame. was already coming out of the bottom of her foot. Yeah. And then the two that were really bonded that were extremely lame and in pain. One of those was pretty foundered too. Yeah. 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 No. That's like three foundered ones in one day. Yeah. That's always hard. And then the other one the other one had really bad DSLD and its joints and its ligaments were already gone. Like, yeah. yeah, it's hocks, or not it's hocks, I'm sorry, but it's fetlocks in the back were touching the ground as it was walking out. Yeah, it's, it's really sad, but that's, that's what we do here. And I think today went really, really smooth. Um, but the horses are all settled in, they're happy, they're munching on their hay, and none of this would be possible without people just like yourselves donating. So. Uh, thank you so much and um you want to talk about the pony at all yeah why don't you why don't you, why don't you, you talk yeah, about the so pony. we had that pony with the really overgrown feet we had our specialist farrier out his name is quint and he did an excellent job they actually look like normal feet now so we're just gonna watch him and see how he does 
He's going to stay in a stall for a little while. Um, he is on quite a bit of pain meds, so don't worry, he's not in pain. Or she. I think it's a she. she. Actually, it's a she. she. We've seen a lot of horses today, and we have one that we're not sure, even if it's a girl or a boy, so. Yeah, but she's on a yes. lot of pain meds, and she's in a stall with lots of bedding and hay, and she's super happy. And Doc will be out next week to examine them all again and all that good stuff, so. Yeah, it's it's been a great auction, and thank you all so much for your help. And, and please don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, and thank you so much for your support.